Here's a model of the part that we're going to make. This is the eccentric locking cam. So it's going to be made of brass. It's essentially cylindrical. And the flats on either side and these large chamfers are just clearance. They just minimize the thickness of the bracket used to house it. So those are not critical features. They just allow this to turn. In the center is a counterbore for a screw, which is deeper than the standard counterbore uh, to make sure that the screw is not proud of any area of the brass. So pretty simple. Let's do it. I've got this centered within about about five tenths, about half a thou. It's a little difficult to say because I'm indicating the stock diameter and I think it's actually slightly egg shaped, but I'm going to be turning down the OD. So I will mark the center point here and then offset the table, drill and ream the offset hole. Don't actually need this first center mark, just needed to find it and then offset to this new position. Having the two center marks actually caused a problem with drilling. Originally, I thought it would be a good idea to machine the clearance flats at this point. This is a terrible setup. There's absolutely nothing preventing the part from rotating. There's a lot of sideways force on the brass rod from that end mill. So in the end, I gave up on this approach and just went to the lathe with it. I hadn't got very far with milling the side features and so there's still enough stock to completely clean up and get to the final OD. And so that's all we're doing at this operation, just cleaning up the end and then turning the OD to the finished side. Just lightly touching on the OD at this point, which is a known dimension, uh, just to establish start position and then using that information to program the DRO. The insert I'm using here is a Valenite CNMP431 insert. It's actually designed uh, for aluminum or aluminized aluminum. Um, but it works really well on any non-ferrous metal. It works really well on copper and brass, uh, as well as aluminium. So, as you can see, it produces a wonderful finish. Get off of there, bloody things. Now, beautiful finish on here, smooth. Now, 
You might be expecting me to part this off at this point, but no. Patience. Um, generally pays to leave the part on whatever piece of bar stock or raw material it's part of as long as possible. Leaving it on here is going to make it much easier to hold for the drilling operation. I have to put a pin through here at some point or a screw or something. Um, plus I have to machine two flats on it and it will be much easier to hold onto this so that I can do all of that work and then part it off. So that's what we'll do. What I'm going to do is what I've got set up here because I can get a lot of the next set of operations done in just this one setup. But what I have to do is get the center of the offset hole and the OD vertical somewhat. That's not hugely critical because these are just clearance surfaces I'm putting on there. And then with those vertical, I can come and mill, I can side mill the two sides that I need for clearance. I can do the two top chamfers and then just rotate it to do the two bottom chamfers and then go and part it off. I'm touching off on the top of the part with the test indicator and then moving the table backwards and forwards in the Y direction to find the axis of the part. Now, I've moved the indicator down onto a gauge pin which is in the offset hole and by rotating the part backwards and forwards I can get the offset hole completely vertical in relation to the axis of the part. It's a little bit crude but that's all that's needed for this particular part. I applied a sharpie mark here just so that it's easy to see when the end mill is touching the side of the part. And that gives me a zero position from which I can start machining the flats. Now you can see I've got the part restrained much more appropriately for this operation this time. So this should not be a difficult thing to do at all. These chamfers are needed just so that the cam clears the pocket of the bracket that it's mounted in when you rotate it. They sort of finish it off as well. Looks quite good, I think. To align the part for the second set of chamfers, I simply rotate it and then use the quill to get the two faces vertical and now I know that it's positioned correctly again. Simple, crude and effective. Again, these are just basic clearance features so don't need to be super accurate. The story so far. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to actually press the record button so I didn't show you drilling the hole and the counterbore, but that's very standard stuff, nothing unusual there. So now I'm going to get this back in the lathe, part it off, do a little deburring and chamfering, and then this is done. The razor blade is just being used to align the edge of the parting tool with the end of the part. Now moving over to the right position and begin parting off. This little brass rod is held in the drill chuck in the tailstock just to catch the part as it comes off.
Bingo. Last but not least, just chamfering the ends. Alright, well let's take a look at this so far. So off camera I made this actuator shaft because it's really a very simple piece. It's just a case of cutting it to length, turning it to length and drilling and tapping two holes. One up the end here is for the actuator lever and then this one to secure the uh, cam. And so you can see Go this way. You can see the idea is that the rotate the cam and then this face will contact the cross slide and lock it. That's the idea. So that all fit together nicely. So all that remains now is to make the uh, special bolts that hold it in place and a little lever to actuate it so that's in the next video so thanks for watching hope this is interesting to you please like and subscribe and all the very best stay well and enjoy